Hello. So today we are going to have a short video on dynamic equilibrium. This is going to be a topic that comes up a lot in this class. Um, so this will not be the only video on equilibrium, but I just want to give you guys an introduction uh, to dynamic equilibrium. It's something you guys should have already seen, um, but let's make sure everybody's on the same page here. So dynamic equilibrium is a condition in which two opposing processes occur simultaneously and at equal rates. So um, we generally see this with reactions. So instead of a reaction being what we call a forward reaction, it would be a reversible reaction. So where you would have seen this in 1211 is with uh, weak acid and weak base dissociations. So unlike a strong acid or a strong base that completely dissociates, weak acids and weak bases partially dissociate and you're, there's an equilibrium between the undissociated substance and the dissociated substance. Um, we will also will see this in this class in other reactions along with phase changes. So um, what I mean by that is if we are at our uh, melting point or our boiling point so right at that correct temperature at um, one atmosphere, at the temperature of boiling, we are in equilibrium between our liquid and our gas phase. At the temperature of melting, we are at our equilibrium between our solid and our liquid phase. So we'll look at this as phase equilibriums. Um, we'll look at it specifically with vapor pressure, vapor pressure equilibrium. Um, so we'll go, there'll be, more things within chapter 11, but we will also bring it back up in other chapters. It's going to be a fairly common thing we're going to talk about in most chapters in 1212. So hopefully you guys understand dynamic equilibrium already, or at the end of this video, you understand it. Um, I'm not going to go super into it, but let's kind of think about what happens. So here I have a reaction. I've got my blue molecule or atom reacting with my purple molecule. So this would be at the very beginning of the reaction. So at the very beginning of a reaction, um, we have molecular collisions, right? Collisions between molecules or atoms. And those collisions will result in reactions occurring, um, collision theory. So we're going to call this A and B. So as A plus B come together, they're going to react to produce C plus D. So at the very beginning, all we have is A and B, right? So we would say that there's lots of molecules of A and B reacting. And once we have an effective collision, A and B will turn into some particles of C and D. Okay, so we'll have A and B going to form C plus D. Now, one way arrow that would indicate that we have a forward reaction. However, in the case of a reversible reaction, what's going to happen is now we're going to have the products reacting. And when those products react, they form or reform our reactants. So here we have two reactions. So once we have our initial reactants, forming products, we then will have a 
reaction occur between the products to reform reactants. So we have two reactions occurring at the same time, reactants to products, and then products to reactants. Okay, so this is just two points along the reaction. This is earlier and this is later. So as they react more and more, we produce more C and D and then C and D go back and reproduce A and B. So we would write it as A plus B is in equilibrium. This double barbed arrow means equilibrium with C plus D. So as we form C and D, they react to produce A and B again. Um, and this will keep on occurring till we get to a steady state. And what I mean by that is not that we're going to stop having the reaction occur. The reaction is going to still occur, but we are not going to increase concentrations of any of our substance. We're going to get to a steady amount of each substance. So we'll still have A plus B reacting to produce C and D, and we'll have C and D reacting to produce A and B, but they're going to be occurring at what we call the same rate, right? So A and B will con be converted into C and D at the same rate that C and D is converted into A and B. So the rates will level out. That does not mean that their concentrations will be equal. It just means that we're going to be producing each substance at the same rate. So the change in concentration of any one substance uh, will not occur. There won't be any change. And that's when we reach a state of dynamic e equilibrium. So dynamic equilibrium is basically we have the reactions occurring, but they're occurring at the same rate. So our concentrations of substances aren't changing. Um, again, our substances do not have to be the same uh, concentration, but we're going to reach a set concentration of each substance. And our rate of the forward reaction, so that's the one pointed towards from products to reactants, or sorry, reactants to products, will equal the rate of the reverse reaction. Okay, so we can kind of look at it in terms, so we have time and concentration. We have time and concentration, or we can look at time and rate. So at the beginning, so at time zero, I'm going to have this pink line. This is going to be reactant concentration or reactant rate. So at time zero, we're going to start out with a high concentration of reactant and it will, as it converts into our product, it will reach a steady state where it's no longer changing. Our rate will have the same thing. It'll start out high because we have a lot of concentration of reactant and over time that will decrease. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for product. So we have product concentration and product rate. Okay, or I guess I'm actually going to put this as forward rate, the, the rate of the forward reaction and reverse rate, the rate of the reverse reaction. Okay, so 
At the beginning, we start with zero product concentration, and it goes up until it levels out. Okay, again, it's not going to be equal to the uh, reactant concentration, but it will level out at the same point of time that our reactant concentration levels out. Same thing here, the rate of the reverse reaction will reach a point, and this is actually supposed to be the same point in time. <laughs> we'll reach a point where they are equal, and they will level out. Now those, the rates themselves, will be equal to each other. We will talk more about equilibrium, but hopefully this kind of gives you a starting place um, to understand equilibrium because we're going to be talking about it in you know within several points of this chapter and others okay bye